Welcome to the Club 365 SharePoint Foundations micro course. Hopefully you've arrived here because you've heard of SharePoint or you have an interest in SharePoint, but you'd like to know more, or perhaps you have some questions as to what SharePoint is and how it might help you. Or somebody has offered SharePoint to you and you just don't know anything about it. For all of these, I hope to give you some answers in a very short and simple course that you can take in the next 20 minutes. The goal is to give you an understanding of what we mean by SharePoint as a service within Microsoft 365, some of its applications and how it might help you, and then finally some of the terms that are most commonly used in relation to SharePoint. With all of these, you can then make the choice to go deeper and learn more about SharePoint or explore the Microsoft 365 domain or power platform in more depth. Good luck. So you might have heard of SharePoint because according to Microsoft, more than 250,000 organizations use SharePoint and over 85% of the Fortune 500 companies who do use SharePoint online as part of their business model. When considering SharePoint as a thing, it's largely and often thought about as a content management and collaboration tool and when you refer to Gartner's most recent magic quadrant for content services platforms, SharePoint is the leader in the market. The reason is because Microsoft have now integrated it much more fully with their wider product offering for businesses called Microsoft 365. Another way you might have come across SharePoint is that if you use Teams, for example, to chat and collaborate with your team members, your organization, it's very likely that you're actually using services offered by SharePoint. So much of what we're gonna cover in this micro course will be familiar to you. For example, a Teams file tab is actually behind the scenes a SharePoint document library. A lot of the permissioning in Teams is based upon groups which are common to Teams and SharePoint. So there's a good chance that what you're about to see won't be that new for you. Let's just take a step back and ask ourselves, what is it? At the top level, SharePoint is now part of an ever-growing Microsoft 365 stack. And by stack, I mean a collection of services or product offerings that Microsoft provides for us to help us achieve common goals and common aims using their software. What used to be quite a limited set of Office 365 tools and then a separate SharePoint opportunity is now part of this wider Microsoft 365 umbrella where you can not only receive Office capabilities like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, you can also now, even as part of the basic licenses for businesses, gain access to tools like SharePoint and other tools called the Power Platform for example, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power BI. SharePoint now exists as one of a number of services that Microsoft offers to you within Microsoft 365 to help your business expand, use the integrations on offer, and become more efficient at doing the jobs you do well. Since its inception in 2001, where it was referred to as something called Microsoft Portal Server, it's grown up a lot. Many people consider it to be a file server, or a location where they can simply store lists of information. But over the years, it's grown up way beyond that to become part of this arsenal of business tools available to the non-developer and developer alike within Microsoft 365. It came online at around 2015, 2016 after being largely an on-premise tool. But the focus we're gonna give here is not so much to the on-premise opportunities, but more the cloud. Because as we mentioned earlier, Upwards of 85% of all Microsoft SharePoint users are utilizing these cloud-based SharePoint opportunities. So again, let's re-ask that question. What is SharePoint? And again, the answer might be, be, might be feeling slightly elusive. And the reason is because there isn't a single thing that SharePoint is anymore. It's more, what can I do with SharePoint? It's a bit like a Swiss army knife. It's not designed for one specific task, but instead can achieve multiple tasks for you depending on your context. So if we take Teams as a lift off point to give you some examples of what SharePoint's doing for you, let's go and have a look. As mentioned earlier, when we look into the Teams files tab, we're actually exposing a SharePoint document library. Teams can also expose SharePoint lists for you 
which contain data and information that you might want to use in your business or your workflow. SharePoint can also expose and contain apps and videos and much, much more. SharePoint can also be an intranet provider for you. It can expose information for your team or your organisation that you can keep up to date and communicate and collaborate. What isn't SharePoint? This is the big misunderstanding of SharePoint. People consider it as a file store or a database or perhaps a website. SharePoint isn't a database. It doesn't hold relational information at scale that can be performant across multiple dimensions of one-to-many or many-to-one relationships. It simply isn't designed like SQL or Oracle or other databases with that use case in mind. However, it is a location where you can store data. And by data, I mean items of information which are important to you in either your communication or your business or your workflow needs. And you can also store metadata relating to those items. For example, information which describes, characterizes, or confirms an aspect of why that item is in the list. SharePoint isn't a website, but again, it does offer opportunities to collaborate and share information, images, themes, look and feel, gather information, just like a typical website. SharePoint isn't just a file store. It can store files, it can also store data. But what it can also do is add much richer information to those files and those items and allow you to set up workflows, flows and processes to help you manage that information and perform actions with it. So it doesn't just become a static bucket that you put information in. It's often mentioned that SharePoint's becoming obsolete. Well, to reassure you, there is no risk of SharePoint dying anytime soon. Since it's gaining more popularity as an essential part of the solutions that Microsoft offer in their vision, part of a world of services within Microsoft 365 that support many, many different needs under the one license umbrella. So the next question is, why would I want to use it? Perhaps if we just turn that on its head and ask, why would I want to learn it? If we consider how widely it's used and its value in many different business contexts, and we look at the fact that many SharePoint licenses offer it, the first answer to that is it's super accessible. It's easy and cheap to set up and to use. It hasn't got a complex interface to get used to, like integrating with a SQL database, for example. It doesn't require code. Everything you do can be point and click. It can carry large volumes of data for you of different types, from videos to lists to documents, even to applications that it can expose. It can offer an intranet. It can be a video hub. It can be a document flow site. It has a wide variety of uses that you may be able to put it to all relatively easily. And that is the beauty of SharePoint is it sits as a very easy to use service and it's also a service which integrates at the click of a few buttons with many of the other Microsoft 365 services in ways that SQL perhaps doesn't or Excel doesn't. So how do we find SharePoint? As I mentioned, SharePoint is part of some of the most basic licenses that you have. So the chances are you will see access to SharePoint as part of your Microsoft 365 tenant. If you don't, it's very easy to get hold of at a very low price and start to experiment. You can even try out a Microsoft developer tenant. So we get there by going to your tenant homepage and we look at the apps that we have available to us. And you'll notice SharePoint is now one of those apps. It's no longer the main front facing app. It is simply part of a suite of services offered by Microsoft. But the benefit of SharePoint is it is a pivot point and it is an integration point for a lot of other services. To start to get to grips with SharePoint, there'll be some basic terms that you'll want to know. The first of these is a SharePoint site. Think of this as the umbrella term for the collection of people, groups, content, documents, home pages, themes that all relate to that one topic you're interested in or one team you're interested in or one organization. For example, there might be a site for your HR group, there might be a site for your training group, 
there might be a site for your legal group, all of which have different services being supported. There are two very different types of site within the SharePoint environment. The first of these is set up thinking about the need to communicate information and share with a group from one person or one team to many. So this is called a communication site. It's not backed by any permissioning model such as a group, so it's very much there to expose information, to share information and very lightweight collaboration. If you want to find some great examples of SharePoint communication sites, head over to the Microsoft Lookbooks for SharePoint. You can view and download all sorts of different templates to help you get the right look and feel for your environment. The flip side of the coin is what's called a SharePoint team site. Why is this a bit better? Well, better is a relative term. It offers more features. Because it's backed by a permissions group in Microsoft 365, it unlocks the ability to secure information, to allow access to information, and actually, therefore, also allows you to access other different services in Microsoft 365. Common across all types of SharePoint site is the concept of a site template. Now a site template is simply a look and feel that you can apply for your SharePoint site, whether it's communication or a team site, that helps you build in the features that you need. You could apply a template, for example, to service the needs of a project management site. And through this template, various different web parts that we'll talk about in a moment and features will be enabled for you. Your organisation can also create their own templates and share these so that you achieve some continuity through all of your SharePoint sites. What do I mean by web part? Think of it like a component that you're adding to a page which can perform an action. The action could be to expose some information or it could be to capture some information. There are many versatile uses for web parts. For example, within a team site, if you've produced an, a power app that people want to use, you can add a power app right there within the team site for people to use instantly. A web part might be Microsoft News, for example. It may be a list of information that you want to expose easily on your home page. Content management in this way becomes really simple using SharePoint. Moving on from web parts, one of the terms I just mentioned there is list. SharePoint is known and very popular for containing data and for containing lists and documents. A list is a grouping of information relating to a topic that you're interested in. Think of it like an Excel spreadsheet with lots of rows and columns. You can pretty much define anything you want in a list. There are certain types of predefined lists that you can use with certain characteristics and properties, but the simple form of a list will be, for example, a list of holiday requirements or requests. You can set up a list in many different ways and you can define the columns. You can also define the views that you'd like to see. By that I mean, if you have a list of information with 10 columns and you only ever really want to scan and see three of those, you can set up a view which you very quickly select, allowing you to view just that data that you care about. Alongside lists, another really common term that you'll hear is a document library. This is where SharePoint does go, as mentioned before, beyond a simple file server. You can have a SharePoint document library, and in it you can contain many different types of documents, from videos to Excel files to Word documents to PDFs. You can then also define metadata, which describes information about those documents. For example, who authored it, when it's due for review. And from this data and from that document library, the benefit of SharePoint is you can trigger certain actions and activities all seamlessly within the SharePoint interface. This is where some of its power really lies. SharePoint links from here to many of the different services that you might want to use. For example, Power Automate, or you may want to have an approval workflow 
when somebody loads a document to a document library and when that document's approved you move it to a new live document library. All of these capabilities are there within the boundaries of SharePoint out of the box. You'll also hear the term SharePoint Site Settings. This is an additional benefit of SharePoint in that as a location to perform many activities and store many types of information, you can set the parameters for that storage, who can do what and create permissioning models that allow you to be very confident that your information is both secure but also accessible to the right people. This is where a lot of the more complex activity within SharePoint may happen, creating roles and permissions, etc. And we won't go into that here, but suffice to say SharePoint is a very powerful tool with some very powerful supporting infrastructure behind its front end. A term closely related to these site settings that you may hear is the term classic SharePoint. SharePoint has evolved from an on-premise service back in 2001 into what you see now, a fully-fledged cloud service. Classic refers to the interface that you'll see if you're familiar with some of those more legacy versions of SharePoint. Whereas now the modern view in SharePoint is streamlined to help you achieve what you need to do nice and quickly with a simplified interface, leaving the more complex interactions behind the scenes. The same capabilities and features are there, but they look slightly different. SharePoint is still in transition and you may see these views mixed. Why is SharePoint often talked about in relation to the Power Platform? If you look at SharePoint now and you consider what I've said about Microsoft 365 and its widening services, SharePoint sits as a pivotal point for a lot of the easy entry options, the Power Platform particularly where citizen developers like you and I can build apps with no or very little code. But more than that, Microsoft have deliberately integrated launch points for these apps and these services right within SharePoint. So now you can take a list of data in SharePoint and with a click of an integrate button, create an app from that data to allow you to manage that list. You can also launch a Power Automate flow directly from a list of documents, for example, to allow you to trigger approval flows for these documents. Microsoft are more and more integrating these services together to allow cross-pollination of each to support your business needs. How can I get more help to understand what's on offer? If you've enjoyed listening a little bit about SharePoint and it's something you're interested in, my first recommendation would be to seek out April Dunham's session, Introduction to SharePoint. Type it into the search bar on the Academy and you'll find it right away. It's a great introduction to some of the terms that I've touched on here, but goes a little deeper over the 45 minutes. If you're interested in how Microsoft SharePoint sits amongst the Power Platform, for example, or wider Microsoft 365 services, head over to the micro course, Microsoft 365 Foundations, to see it in its wider context. If this triggers your interest, then why not try out one of our five day challenges? These are designed to help give you experience of what SharePoint can offer to you, but also how it integrates seamlessly back and forth to other Microsoft 365 services. So I hope you've enjoyed this course and I hope to see you soon in the Academy.